So good day. Today's topic is mechanical hazards. Um, so first of all, what is mechanical hazards? So mechanical hazards is actually hazard that is created by moving parts, by machines, by equipment, okay, by tools. So these tools, they they have parts that is actually hazardous to human being. For example, because of the moving parts, you may get caught between it. You can have you maybe your part of your sleeve getting caught between the moving parts. So that is mechanical hazard. It's caused by machines and equipments. All right, so there are many different types of injuries that can happen due to mechanical hazard. Uh, one of it is by impact. For example, if you are being hit by uh, ejected part of a machine or equipment. Uh, injuries can also be due to friction and abrasion. Abrasion, for example, if you use a sander, uh, a sanding machine, and then uh, if you accidentally put your finger there, it, it will accidentally remove part of your skin. So that's by friction and abrasion. And, uh, you can also be trapped. Yeah, entrapment, you, you get caught between moving parts of machine or equipment or plant, and suddenly you get you got trapped between the, the machine. You can also get stabbed and puncture. Um, for example, if you use a nail gun, the nail gun, if you accidentally nail gun your hand, so you puncture yourself. Um, you can also get injuries by high pressure fluid injection if there's a high pressure fluid. Uh, it can burst and inject the hydraulic oil into a person's hand and then crushing. Uh, crushing is, for example, collision of plant with a person and then shearing. Shearing is like cutting when you have two moving parts that's sharp, uh, moving across one another like scissors. So if you have your fingers between it, it will just shear your fingers. Cutting severing a human body part by cutting motion. For example, it amputates your finger on a cutting machine. You accidentally put your hand in it, it cuts your whole hand. And then also by entanglement, especially if you have loose sleeve, you have loose scarf, and it gets caught in a moving part, and then it, it, just, it, it, it just draws you into that machine. So that's due, uh, due to entanglement. So they are, that's why the machines, they are hazardous. So there are different actions of uh, mechanical hazards. So you can, uh, the mechanical hazard can be due to the cutting, motion, shearing, bending, puncturing, crushing, straining, shaping, forming, boring. Okay. So if you uh, if you Google, you can actually find a lot of gory pictures of uh, injuries due to mechanical hazards. Uh, this slide was initially it had all these gory uh, pictures of injuries due to mechanical hazard, but I had them removed because I think they were just too uh, gross. Okay, um, the motion of cutting is normal in chemical plants. It's, they are always cutting machines. Um, if you have your body parts in contact with the sharp edges, if you accidentally uh, at a point, uh, you put the your part of the body at the cutting operation. You can accidentally cut your uh, finger, for example, and not just having a body, your body part being cut. Um, other injuries can also uh, happen from cutting motions because uh, when you do cutting, let's say if you're cutting uh, core, for example, or um, wood, so part of the material will fly, okay, it will chip and fly uh, and and hit a person. So this is uh, this is why uh, you need to wear protective goggles so that it doesn't hit your eyes. OK, a shearing motion is like a scissors. So we have two moving parts uh, and you apply power to a side or knife in order to trim or to shear metal or other materials. Uh, so 
they are sharp and it occurs at the point of shearing operation. Let's say this is the, your blade and this is your stock material. If you accidentally have a part of your body here, it will shear um, your body part because they really they don't have any mechanism to stop. If uh, if they um, they don't have some sort of detection to detect a body part rather than the stock material that is supposed to cut. All right. Puncturing, like, like how um, you use the puncher to punch holes in papers, um, a power is applied to a slide or a ram for the purpose of blanking uh, uh, material, drawing or even stamping metals or other materials. So they are sharp and they have a lot of power. And the injury can occur at the point of that operation. And bending, so sometimes uh, the same type of power, or same style of movement of this going up and down movement, it not just is, it doesn't doesn't really punch, but it bends. It's uh, its function is to bend a material. Um, so at this point of operation where it, it does it bends the material, it can cause injury. Okay. So moving parts are dangerous too. Uh, it can be rotating nip points, transversing, over internal change, and reciprocating. So among the components um, uh, in moving parts are pulleys, gears, chains, shaft, sprocket, belts, and so on. So um, let's take rotating objects. So rot the rotating motion can be very dangerous. Even though the rotating um, part or the shaft is smooth and it moves slowly, it can grip your clothing and it can force an arm or a hand into dangerous position. So rotating nip points are created between rotating and tangentially moving part or fixed part. Okay, so we have that, those nip points. Um, you can all, it can also be a rotating and tangentially moving parts or rotating and a fixed part. So it's either two parts rotating or one part is fixed or with a tangentially moving part. So these are examples of um, uh, moving parts of the equipment. So these are really hazardous um, and um, According to uh, to OSH procedures, these components must be covered so that it's not uh, open to um, to uh, people getting stuck uh, in the rotating rotating parts. Now, reciprocating is the motion of moving back and forth or up and down. And this can trap a worker between a moving and stationary part. If, if for example, just some, uh, just somebody decided to walk through a moving part, and if it moves in, it can trap that person there and cause uh, uh, an injury to that person. Okay, transversing is a moving part. It can create a hazard because a worker may be struck or caught in a pinch or shear point by the moving part. So this is a transverse motion of a bell. And then there are also other mechanical hazards besides losing a body part, um, especially in the cutting motion. There are the flying chips, like wood chips, and if you you're cutting metal, it can create sparks. So this is the reason why the you need to have PPE or eye protection um, from these hazards. OK, so. Um, so they're everywhere because we deal with all these moving machines, moving parts. But how do we reduce these mechanical hazards? So one thing that should be done is to do machine safeguarding. Okay. Now, what is safe, um, safeguarding a machine? Safeguarding machine means that if there are any machine parts or functions or process 
that can cause injury must be safeguarded. It must be covered. Where the operation of a machine or contact with it can injure the operator or others in the vicinity, then that hazards must be either eliminated or controlled. Okay. So this is an example of a closing that uh, safeguards this uh, moving belt of this equipment. Now, what is the purpose of machine safeguarding? So what we really want to do is to minimize the risk of accidents due to direct contact between the human or the operator and that machine. And this direct contact can either be the operator itself having a direct contact with the machine because he's just uh, he's just tired, he's fatigued, and he's distracted, or he's, he's just being careless, also conducting unsafe act. Or the direct contact can even be not the fault of the operator, but it's just that the machine produces all these flying chips and hot metal splashes. And also it can be a result of a malfunction of the machine. So more purposes of machine safeguarding. Safeguards are essential to protect workers from needless and preventable injuries. So any part, function or process which may cause injury must be safeguarded and immediate corrective actions, including stopping the machine, it must be taken when a potential mechanical hazard is observed. Now, we can safeguard the machine, but what makes it effective? An effective guard must prevent human contact with any potentially harmful machine part. It must also not be present uh, it, it, it shouldn't be a hazard in itself or create interference. So that, that safeguard itself is not a hazard and it doesn't interfere with the process. And the safeguard must not allow objects to fall into that part. So the safeguard must be intact. It must not be uh, wobbly and can cause parts of it to fall apart. And the safeguard must allow safe maintenance and lubrication either to the machine and to the safeguard. All right, so there are many ways of safeguarding machine. So this really depends on what is the type of the operation, what is the size or the shape of the machine, what is the physical layout of the work area, and what is the type of material that we are safeguarding. So these are two different methods of machine safeguarding. You can do it either by guard or by a device. Uh, safeguarding using guards is, is basically prevention and it's always preferred and more practical to be used for power transmission, which is uh, the motion. While using a device, which is actually a control strategy, they're sometimes more practical option when safeguarding uh, point of operation. When when you are in an operation, so it's, it's good to have a control measures or using a device. 